welcome back to uh, this session on animal ethics. Now, uh, let us uh, consider some of the criticisms uh, against uh, um, Singer's idea on animal ethics. Uh, some of these criticisms uh, critiques are of uh, the opinion that animals do not have uh, language, they do not express uh, their pain as we human beings express uh, our pain. So, therefore, there is no problem in inflicting pain on, on them. This is indeed weak argument of the critics. And the other point that the critics uh, uh, maintain is that the market is not sensitive to individuals purchasing uh, decisions. So, as, as I was giving an example of my own self that suppose I become a, a vegetarian uh, from tomorrow onwards, then uh, that is not going to uh, have an impact on the market. So, uh, but uh, Singer's response to this idea of uh, market not being sensitive to individual purchasing decisions is that, that if go on mobilizing people, go on educating uh, people and very actively involved in uh, representing it in various forums, possibly that will have impact on the market. So, these are the two uh, things. The, the other point, whether animals do have, do feel pain or not. Uh, Singer argues that uh, in most of the cases uh, where the, the nerve of the uh, of a you know adult is uh, damaged, then he doesn't or she doesn't feel pain. Or in the case of uh, infant, um, they don't express in the way and uh, we express a full fledged. So is it then uh, that they should be inflicted in a pain? So these are the two. Uh, criticisms uh, which I consider the weak argument against animal ethics has to be you know uh, considered. Then uh, uh, the next uh, strong argument that can uh, animals be killed if their living condition is better or they do not feel pain. The argument is that suppose we improve upon our genetic engineering and helps raising animals uh, intensively then does that justify our killing? That, that is an argument uh, one we need to think uh, upon. Then uh, one of the uh, proponent of uh, this uh, called Tom Reagan uh, believes that this whole idea of a utilitarian approach to animal ethics is not very healthy approach, not a very uh, sound thesis. Uh, so therefore, uh, we need to not consider um, the concept of utility alone uh, as a very important uh, feature of our decisions. Uh, so, our decisions could be made uh, over and above uh, if we recognize the value of something beyond what kind of utility it provides to uh, us. So, therefore, it is important for all of us that we recognize the value of an entity or a value of a person or a value of uh, other non human beings over and above what kind of utility they provide to all of us. So, that is the um, thing which uh, we need to uh, take into account. Now, uh, both Reagan and Singer argues uh, uh, their thesis from a Kantian perspective. You may recollect that you know uh, yesterday's uh, discussion where uh, Kant, uh, we had uh, criticized Kant on this that Kant had given emphasis on human uh, values so much that you uh, know th there is uh, there is less uh, position on, you uh, know, he had taken a very mild position on animal ethics, the value of animals. But uh, Kant has been reinterpreted uh, by Singer as well as Reagan, uh, stating that why we should value life, because uh, very interesting uh, point which uh, is raised by both of them is that that life at least at a certain level of complexity deserves respect. So, this is what is important, whether you feel pain or not, whether you are capable enough to express articulate pain or not. Now, that is not the thing that we need to consider when we uh, are interacting with other living organism. So, what is more important is that, that life as a whole, uh, life as a concept needs to be you know uh, considered seriously, uh, um, precisely because it is a complex concept and that deserves respect. Uh, so, the complexity of this concept uh, is to be taken into account when we uh, respect 
uh, another life. This respect is due regardless of how many people recognize it or regardless of what kind of contribution it makes to the humanity. Uh, that is, uh, I think, uh, something very significant. A point which uh, is raised by Singer. So, life matters to us irrespective of the fact that whether uh, it contributes directly uh, or indirectly to uh, the humanity, for the growth of the humanity. So, uh, so it is in that uh, context, our preferences, our expectations, our uh, you know, um, feeling of hope and disappointment are, are to be taken into consideration that it is at par with uh, the other forms of life. I would again reiterate uh, this point that the point that I raised uh, in connection with moral extensionism that the, the biotic community is a large, the large uh, community, uh, it is a holistic community uh, and um, therefore, uh, the moral agent has to widen the scope of uh, moral discourses in which every living and non-living becomes uh, the part of it. And uh, if you talk about the western ethical discourse, uh, it is a discourse which is going on for last maybe more than 200 uh, years or 300 years of uh, uh, no, uh, where uh, or if you can uh, go back to Aristotle and the Plato's, uh, then they have this developed form of ethics because they have been constantly debating uh, upon certain uh, concepts, what is valuable for humanity and what is valuable for the entire uh, human society. The constant discourse, uh, the, the constant engagement with this knowledge that, that what is good, uh, what is good for uh, the humanity, what is good for the universe, uh, that has given birth to the idea of animal ethics, animal rights and maybe um, they will talk about more sophisticated concepts. Uh, and uh, they also take into account that, that this abolition of slavery and gender inequality has been abolished. Therefore, uh, they also take into uh, consideration that uh, in future, uh, maybe more rigorously animal rights will be uh, practiced. These are the evidences, markers in the history of ethical discourse, uh, when it comes to the success uh, and the success story of moral extensionism. Now, the duties to the endangered species is that an adequate ethics for preserving a species requires a more unprecedented mix of biological science and ethics. Yesterday, I also pointed out this, that our approach should be both scientific as well as uh, philosophical uh, approach and then only we will be able to grow up uh, to, uh, to face the present uh, challenges as well as we will have something with us to respond to the future challenges as well. So, uh, so it is in that context we need to have a critical enquiry uh, on uh, these issues and that will be a synthesis of the biological or more generally speaking the scientific approach and the ethical con uh, approach with an ethical concern will be more enlightening uh, to uh, all of us. Then one point which uh, was not taken into account whether uh, are there no direct duties endangered species. Now, we need to protect them and preserve their these species which are, uh, this is a sentimental issue, there is no rationality uh, here. We have to protect them, suppose uh, they are becoming uh, extinct day by day. So, uh, it is a more of a sentimental and emotional uh, issue that is binding us because that will generate why emotional and uh, the sentimental attitude would work better because that will create a deeper sense of obligation to uh, them, not the rational argument because for most of us uh, uh, or at this level, we may not have a pure scientific uh, account that this is causing what, clear cut effect of what is causing what. But uh, if you are uh, emotionally associated with uh, or attached to uh, other beings uh, who are disappearing uh, from uh, the universe, then probably that will help us forming a deeper sense of, uh, of, of obligation uh, towards uh, the other biotic 
uh, wings. Uh, say for example, one, uh, one example could be stated like this uh, that who knows uh, say uh, suppose uh, there, are, there are a lot of cases of kidney transplantations and uh, there are a lot of things are happening, corruptions are happening various level. Now, somebody who uh, discovers uh, say uh, tomorrow somebody comes out uh, with a, a thesis that uh, puff will be very important for kidney uh, uh, cure, then uh, possibly people will try to preserve the pop face, is not it. So, therefore, to understand the medicinal value, we are ignorant of many things. So, to understand the medicinal value of a particular entity is something that becomes a reason why we should protect uh, the wilderness, why we should be, be protective always in our attitude. So, who knows what will uh, you know, uh, give us good or what is good and what is uh, bad. So, uh, if our approach is critical, if our approach is, um, is scientific uh, and our scientific approach also involves a sense of uh, uh, ethics, then uh, be ready uh, always to uh, face the challenges uh, that are uh, upcoming. There is uh, like uh, the analogy is that uh, being ignorant is not a solution, one has to be an informed citizen. So, a citizen that I was talking about must be an informed citizen. Uh, the informed or a citizen is that he will not act as an ignorant person. Suppose the analogy is this, in case we find that you start destroying species is like tearing the pages out of an unread book. You have not read what is there inside the book, there may be something valuable written. But if you tear it, uh, tear its pages, then it is uh, not really solving any problem. So, uh, written in a language of human, hardly known, uh, know how to read about the place where they live. No sensible person would destroy risotto, stone or tigers, rhinoceros or vulture. These are the things which I have added on that. So, it is very important that we have a very positive attitude and we educate our people, we educate uh, uh, the entire community uh, to have a very positive attitude towards the other non-human beings. One of the pragmatic concern is this that human need insight uh, into the full text of ecosystem evolution, um, then, uh, then it is a, it is not endangered species, but an endangered human future that is of our concern. So, this, this is this is a point which one of the participants uh, pointed out uh, yesterday that it is not uh, global warming, but it is you know we are warmed to a, a kind of a situation or it is, is a kind of an alarming situation that in which we all uh, live and uh, our future is at stake. Uh, so, that, so therefore, all our approach has to be uh, pragmatic. Now, then uh, one uh, point which I would again uh, like to uh, repeat here is that uh, when we change our approach, we must also see that the space, all species have intrinsic value. Not that only humans who have the valuing ability has got an intrinsic value and others have only instrumental values in this sense that they are um, existing for uh, to fulfill human needs and desires, but uh, their existence itself has to be meaningfully seen from the point of view that they have got some uh, value in itself, their existence is something valuable. So, therefore, uh, all species have got intrinsic value. So, valuing uh, speciation directly, however, seems to attach value to the evolutionary process, not merely to the subjective experiences that arises when human reflect over them. So, it is not our subjective attitude of valuing that, that matters, but that subjective attitude must transform us uh, in a direction in which we ascribe values, uh, intrinsic values to the other uh, non-human beings. Then only uh, we will be able to formulate a better um, ethics uh, towards the animal. Then what kind of ethics uh, was the point which was raised? Uh, I think this is a point which uh, you please take into account that the ethics has always been about partners with uh, 
entwined destinies, but it has never been uh, very convincing when pleaded as enlightened self-interest. Therefore, uh, including the class self-interest, even though the practice genuinely altruistic uh, ethics often needs to be reinforced by self-interest. So, most of the time this whole idea of self-interest ought to be done is becoming more egocentric, more our approach is egoless is better. But if you becoming more self-interested and egoistic in our approach, then that is not going to solve or prepare uh, ourselves to resolve the ethical uh, dilemmas, the ethical issues that we uh, face in our day to day life. What humans have learned so far, that the humans have learned some uh, intraspecific altruism. We have learned so far, uh, if you look at the history, this is Peter Singer uh, is making a very interesting claim here, that we have, have at least understood uh, significantly that we should have an altruistic attitude, not egoistic attitude, uh, not a very selfish attitude, but uh, altruistic attitude towards our fellow beings, towards other humans. And that is how uh, now the gender equality, uh, that is how we talk about uh, evolution of slavery, but we need to be interspecific now. Uh, so, that interspecific altruism has to be practiced so that we transcend. I, I was talking about how such an uh, utopia, uh, an idealistic vision of ethics uh, requires um, a transcendental approach or carries uh, with it, uh, with, uh, it a, a notion of transcendence. Um, so, uh, therefore, a interspecific altruism, if at all to be pra practiced, then we should transcend the interspecific altruism attitude and go to uh, practice um, the interspecific altruistic attitudes. So, that is what and because that is that is a principle. So, in principle, we have to uh, cultivate a deeper sense of responsibility towards all biotic beings. It is not by prudence that one has to be altruistic. In principle, I have to, you know, uh, I am obliged to uh, other. In principle, I have some duty towards other. And in principle, I am accountable to uh, what I am doing or what I am performing or what we are performing, quote and unquote, what we are performing, what is uh, our response to the entire um, community, the, the entire universe that is something uh, in principle uh, we have to take up, not by virtue of the prudence that it is uh, necessary. St. Xavier's Catholic College. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. So, I have two questions. Huh. So, first one is, uh, man is made in the image of God. Yes. Then why different people have different uh, ethical values? Another question. Huh. So, in our title, uh, Cruelty to Animals. Hmm. Animals are used our in our research for product testing. Yes, yes. So without using animals, how can we find new medicines to cure the latest diseases? Man is made uh, in the image of God is actually a kind of a statement which is uh, taken from uh, the, the book Genesis. So therefore, uh, now look at this. Um, so there are different religions advocate a different ethics since uh, now the animal ethics has been uh, very uh, systematically um, argued from in the western world and uh, that is where you know there is a reference to their religion that is not actually blocking us uh, to talk about uh, uh, animal ethics here rather what is important um, for us is this that we must perceive um, a kind of an ethical attitude uh, which is common to uh, all. So, there are universal elements which we can articulate, which all religious communities can articulate to talk about uh, humanities, how humanity will flourish. Okay. Then, uh, if this that is the question, uh, if that is our moral concern, then we will find that this, there are certain common elements which are present in all religions. Uh, and that is the, I think, the virtue of um, religious ethics, that there is some commonality. And if the commonalities are given importance for 
uh, human flourishing, then obviously we can think uh, in the line of a universal uh, environmental ethics and universal human ethics as well. So, that is the response to my your first questions. Now, the second question that how we can have an alternative means to uh, know, uh, test our uh, products like particularly the, the uh, drugs or the medicinal value of a particular uh, entity. Now, in many as I pointed out um, uh, that in many countries if you look at very closely in many third world countries which are very uh, deeply poverty ridden uh, states. Uh, countries. So, in those states these drugs are also tested on any on human beings. Okay. So, forget about animals. So, we have uh, we are living in a society in a consumeristic society where we have nullified the very existence of uh, other humans. So, what I am trying to suggest that there are alternative ways to uh, talk about medicines there are alternative way to think of you know, um, a kind of a harmony um, which should coexist between and the uh, animal kingdom and the human kingdom. So, uh, they belong to uh, one uh, space, you know, they belong to one community that is biotic community. So, unnecessarily if you, you know, testing is a, one example only, but if you look at the slaughtering houses, if you the, the way there are many such things are available in YouTube. It, I mean the way the cruelty has been inflicted on animals for various uh, purposes um, is, is a very painful. Uh, uh, so, so, I think this is, this is my response. Yes. You were ever till that about the purchase value, usage value, esteem value and aesthetic value of the product. Should we now consider the environmental value of the product as well, sir? If somebody talks about why we should value, we should have, uh, we should value the human um, life because humans are not only rational, but also have aesthetic value, but also have some kind of a moral morality in them, moral attitude in them. And so, therefore, humans are valuable. Okay, compared to the other species. Now, when we buy something, we must also or when we take a decision, say for example, when we try to create a dam, okay, we only look at its economic values, how much energy it will supply, how many people will be benefited, what, how many employment it will generate. So, in, in quantitative terms, we try to make a estimation of something only in economic terms, but how many species will be affected, what will be its effect on flora and fauna of that particular region that has not been taken into account. So, uh, the other participants in, in, in a, you know, some other institution were talking about how a particular you know, area has been encroached okay, uh, gradually. Um, a national park was encroached by uh, gradually. So, uh, if you look at that, uh, then uh, we are not really considering uh, things from an ethical point of view or moral point of view. So, that is my, so, so there is a cost involved in it and it can be, it cannot be replaced by money. Are you ready? Good morning, sir. Sir, nice lecture from you. Uh, Thank you. Again, a little query. Uh, please. That, uh, uh, about ethics, everyone knows that uh, now uh, what is to be like uh, do not cut the trees or like yes, uh, yes. do not do the pollution. Yes. But again the thing is that uh, how far we are successful to make this in our life, uh, even if we know we do not do it, in every practice it can be seen. So, how it can be inculcated into the students or the society, these things, no. so everywhere uh, we can take the examples how successful we are uh, in cultivating a good moral attitude in our everyday life, one can only realize it at a personal level. And if more people become, uh, say for example, now uh, I will give an example of this Swachh Bharata mission and uh, which we are aware of right now. Now, this mission is for ourselves, is not it? Suppose 
a particular colony, you know, the residents of a particular colony uh, try, try to implement it. They want to make it a better, you know, uh, place to live. They suddenly become you now aware of several environmental, uh, you know, issues that is related with the health and you know the quality life, and they awake to that and collectively do it. Of course, it will have a greater impact, is not it? And seeing that you all are doing, maybe your neighbor uh, in your neighborhood, some people will be influenced to uh, do that uh, in the, the way you have done it, maybe much better than what you have done it. So, we should inspire each other and that is the motto. What kind of satisfaction it will bring, whether it will, uh, that is that's something one we have to realize. Did I respond to your point? Thank you, sir. Welcome. Yes, please carry on. You have any question? Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Uh, sir, it was a nice lecture. It was nice hearing you and uh, on Thank the basis you. of the uh, workshop that we have attended, we have prepared a small model that we would like to show you. Okay, please, please do so. Oh, beautiful it is. Hello. Ah, very nice. Hello, good morning, sir. This is just, very nice. This is a very small nice. effort taken from us that uh, I'm just showing the various uh, systems that is uh, water yes, harvesting yes, yes. system, then purification system, filtration, and uh, the biogas plant, uh, at, uh, as well as the bicycle operated water pump. From these, we can uh, have a uh, save the resources, and uh, it's a great that. Uh, from different different session, we can learn uh, different different things that uh, very useful for our uh, next generation. Um, sir, my uh, simple message is from this model that is, uh, uh, if we focus on the uh, villagers that they have the simple living yes. and they don't have uh, use of lot of uh, they don't have the uh, big buildings and etc etc. But they are living naturally from this globe or the, this trophy. I can uh, see that. Please save the resources and save the environment. Yes. Thank you, sir. Very nice. I appreciate this. All very nice sessions we had from your IIT Bombay till date. And we had learnt a lot, definitely. But uh, now, so far as the question of ethics comes, huh. as so many of you uh, already have questioned you that uh, how will it be possible in the real life to build the ethics? So my personal experience, actually I don't want to question whether my experience I would like to share with you, okay. that uh, if you want to uh, really change the environment, hmm. one has to make changes in himself and he already knows what is right and what is wrong, yes. but still many a times it is not in his control. So yes. best way is if he want to transform himself, if he want to change his mind, so best way is he should meditate daily. And this is what I do and I had seen changes in myself and so I pass on this message to all the viewers that this is a very good uh, way from which we can change our mind and it will help a society to lot, change a lot and this is the right and the ultimate solution which I have experienced from my life. Thank you, thank you. So this, this whole idea of you know, uh, becoming a source <laughs> of change is a uh, something we should uh, think upon. One is that how collectively we can be the source of change. Individually, it is possible uh, to have you know, some kind of a freedom, autonomy um, and that we try to implement uh, in our uh, know, daily life within a very small uh, know, institutional level uh, or within a small family level. But when it comes to the societal level, we require a common source. So therefore, community has to be empowered. Now like the model that you had shown, okay, the, the model represents that how we can think for collective well-being, how we can think for a model where everyone will be benefited, all villagers will be benefited. Now this is a noble idea. Is not it? So, uh, and once we have that solidarity 
and represent that this solidarity is not a fragile solidarity. Is not it? I was talking about connectedness and solidarity. Okay. Now, this solidarity is based upon certain values, certain kind of uh, um, principles, where all villagers are benefited. Okay. So, this is not and, and that is that is something I think which is meaningful and that which I foresee in this model. So, I appreciate uh, now your concern. So, individual may be a kind of a small unit when it comes to change at a very at a, at a very family level or an institutional uh, in a small institutional level. But in a collective level, if you would like to have impact, then this kind of vision is necessary and that vision has to be translated to into action. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. What are the applied ethics to be followed by engineering student and teacher, sir? Please, sir. Applied engineering ethics is a separate discipline. See, uh, here that is also a branch of applied ethics. Applied ethics has many branches, like I was talking about medicine, environment, engineering, all are uh, nowadays treated as an independent you know, uh, discipline and they have their focus area is different. Environmental ethics is one of the applied areas of ethics. Now, our job is as a teacher, as a communicator, our job is to educate, to communicate right ideas to right persons. Right person in the sense that our students are the right persons. They are the, they, are, they will be the main functionaries of future generations. Now, if we are successful in communicating good ideas, implanting good ideas in them, then they will take care of the future uh, world. So, uh, a good engineer similarly will have to take good decisions when building uh, say um, a plant or a building a bridge. Uh, so, uh, suppose somebody is trusted, now look at the engineering ethics, suppose you are assigned to test one no, uh, a bridge which is a which is a connecting bridge from one village to another village. Now, if you go on and test that and you know that there are some you know, fault materials are being used, there is some fault with the construction, but you take bribe and say that yes, this is right, rightly built, no problem with the bridge. Then your certification matters because you are an enlightened person you are an enlightened citizen, good engineer. So, people will definitely uh, know, accept your judgment, but when it comes to your moral concern, you have actually taken a very bad decision. So, engineering ethics is a separate discipline like environmental ethics and they all come under uh, a big umbrella discipline called ethics. Uh, good morning, sir. A uh, very nice and interactive session. So my question is related animal ethics and human ethics. Okay. So sometimes to follow or maintain animal ethics, huh. the human ethics are not considered. So for example, the animals and uh, the pets are using in the advertisements and movies. So yes. though the people who are using these animals, they are taking care of all the things and providing facilities to animals. Yes. But some organizations working for animals have objection on that. Yes. So, yes. they are not considered the facilities provided to the animals. Correct. So, it is against the human ethics. They are manipulating the data and all things true, related to the animals. Yes, yes. Very so, true. please comment. I have the serious concern as you have that there we do not really, uh, we use them as a means of our earnings. When the certain, uh, some pets are being used then we are using them as a means to our earning. We deny their intrinsic value. Theoretically uh, speaking, we deny their intrinsic value. Suppose somebody uses uh, his children to earn money, will that be allowed? That is not certainly allowed. It is not ethically correct. So, similarly, if you have a pet and that has to be used as a kind of a means to earn our livelihood, then that is not something ethically correct. 
so there is there are um, you know, groups voluntary organizations who are working for them uh, for their rights and i think that's a uh, good thing to be practiced hello yes good morning sir good morning is animal ethics telling us to become a vegetarian yes so far as peter singer is concerned i mean if you look at uh, the western societies he comes from uh, an american societies now if you look at the western society and the kind of consumerism uh, their habits are completely different from our habits okay so they certainly but they certainly uh, advocate vegetarianism and see uh, if you uh, if you go to youtube and there are many short films are there uh, look at them you will find that how uh, badly these animals are being treated and how uh, cruel we are in inflicting pain on them and there are there are slaughtering houses and the living condition of the animal is uh, really very very bad so seeing all these once you see all these you will in fact really prefer to become a vegetarian rather than non vegetarian so that is that's my ori actually good morning sir good morning sir all your sessions were really thought provoking sir yeah. my question is we have studied about different codes of ethics sir are the different codes of ethics nationally or internationally certified whether they are internationally certified or not is not our basic concern our basic concern is that whether such a code can be formed which will do good to the entire humanity that's the proposal actually so when we talk about animal ethics or when we talk about environmental uh, ethics we need to see that the the kind of damage that we have made to environment is a very serious damage and that has to be restricted that has to be controlled okay or minimized now how it can be minimized it can be minimized if we take we as the humanity take appropriate actions into account it is not that only mumbaiers have to become you know enlightened on ethics or indians or americans or chinese or japanese all of us together as a society has to respond to environmental crisis and that is actually making environmental issues international is not it it is making it a global issues it is a global problem and we are no more as i as i mentioned in my last lecture yesterday that we are global citizens we are you are not just a citizen of india you are also a citizen of uh, the world is not it you are connected uh, to the world so so if at all we are practicing the value of a global citizenship then we need to see environmental issues more holistically and more uh, globally that way i would like to support that yes it justifies an international um, what is called uh, certification it requires an international certification hello sir good day hello, sir hello hello sir we have one question oh please we are teaching environmental studies subject for okay. adults and students uh, ah. for the engineer students yes the undergraduate students uh, because uh, the honorable supreme court ordered that this subject should be taught to all undergraduates yes right but yes. while teaching the ethics huh. we realize that these students are not ready to accept all these ethics huh. and uh, second thing we realized hmm. that this ethics should be taught to kindergarten students not to these uh, grade students huh. they are not ready to accept but kindergarten students huh. they are ready to follow all these ethics and uh, that's the thing that thing i observed after teaching the subject for last 3 years uh, uh, uh. so uh, any suggestion from your side i have a suggestion of course i uh, know um, good people to suggest <laughs> the, the the idea here is that students when they enter to college or students who are given uh, college level education i am surprised that uh, they are not uh, accepting uh, any suggestions and Uh, i mean uh, i am also not sur surprised to this fact that uh, if you if you say that some of them have not taken your suggestions i will agree with that but 
at least few of them would agree to whatever you suggest. And I think that has to be taken very seriously, that those students have to be taken seriously. Because in, in society, uh, we live in a society where most of us are not bothered about what is happening. So, uh, how can we expect that if somebody is giving a good instruction uh, about the future, about a safe life or a healthy life or a, uh, a quality life uh, or a meaningful uh, life. Uh, so, on these topics if somebody is saying something, then uh, obviously, people will not listen, some people will not listen, but all people are not listening is a dangerous thing. That is a very shocking news, because I do teach to uh, many of the uh, students here and I, f I find that you know most of them take it very seriously um, in, in our institute. So, if they are not taking uh, then it is not a fine situation, but th the point that we as a teacher should cultivate that we as a teacher should keep on telling this, the good story to the, uh, to the students, so that one day somebody will turn their ear and listen to you carefully. Non listening is not our problem, not listening is their problem. So, we should create a situation where they should turn their ears to you and see what is valuable, what this teacher is saying. Kindergarten students are not the student, they do not, they accept it, whatever you tell to your uh, child, they will accept it. Okay, they do not think rationally, but certainly the college going students will think rationally. Okay. So, that is the point. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, I have a question on environmental protection for domestic animals roaming in cities. Okay. Sir, is there any law or act for the prevention of domestic animals roaming in street as these animals move freely in municipal areas and highways, they create inconvenience to the traffic as well as sometimes meet with accidents yes. and hence pollute the environment. Yes. Is there any rules or, or protection acts for them? Is there anything we can do for them? There How are, can we stop it sir? There are rules, uh, but th these rules are not followed. Rules are there, these rules are not seriously followed, but there are protection rules for certain dom domestic animals who freely move in the city areas and uh, the municipal authority or some uh, authority should implement this rule uh, most strictly. But problem lies there with the implementation of rules, how strictly we are following rules. Making rules is easy, but following rules is difficult and we have the habit of ignoring rules, not following it. So, uh, and that is what that is why now, these innocent animals become victims, innocent animals keep roaming on the street okay, without any fear, they are, they are innocent of course, they do not know what is uh, a threat to them, they hardly can guess. So, they become the victim of that, but uh, what is important for all of us that we should, we as an enlightened citizen should create a kind of a movement where the implementation rule is taken very seriously. Sir, we are making lots of rule and regulations starting from Water Act to Battery and Plastic Act, etc. Yes. But is it practically these are implemented in the real fields? Because once you go to any heavy industry, hmm. we can observe that lots of volatile organic pollutants are there. And even if you stay for 30 minutes, there is some symptom, health hazard symptom also arises. The point is, when we suppose as a household, forget about the industry and the, you know those who are polluting at, at a household level for many years we don't have the habit of segregating separating this waste the food waste the wet waste and the dry plastic kind of waste um, materials we don't segregate everything becomes you no know, one i mean everything goes in one packet all waste are not hazardous some waste are really hazardous is not it but in at a, at a household level at least we have the duty to do that. Now, unless certain things are told or come as a kind of a law with a punishment in the background, we do not follow it. So, the problem is that how much we are aware of things 
what causes what and how the same action will indirectly cause harm to our life, if not my life, but somebody else life. The, the rag pickers will also be a victim of certain things, is not it? But I do not relate myself to the rag pickers. I do not relate myself to the, the person who takes my uh, waste or collects my waste from my household. Now, unless I relate those things, we cannot have a complete sense of ethics working in our society. That is the message. Sir, Namaskar. Namaskar. Oh, I have a question. Sir, uh, we, are, we are proud to proud for our Indian culture. In our culture, what are the ethics are written? Uh, ethics are there related to environment. In our culture, there are so many ethics. I do not know which one is not ethical. Culture itself is a kind of a you know, uh, value system. Um, all culture define their what is right and what is wrong. So, um, uh, I think uh, in the Indian culture, if you look at I was giving an example of compassion, love, etc., which is a source of connecting oneself with other, uh, and and that has been very seriously practiced in Buddhism, very seriously uh, been you know expressed in Bhagavad Gita. The culture that we represent have enormous ideas which can be borrowed and you know linked to our everyday life. Uh, sir, my question is, in environmental ethics, what are the three modes of responsibility? The key modes of responsibility is collective responsibility. So far, I was talking about intra-altruism and inter-altruism. So far, I mean, if you talk about enlightened societies like us, we have been practicing ethical values, which is only beneficial for the humanity, for human beings. So, we have been expressing our altruistic attitude in which responsibility is one of the elements only when our engagement with other human beings. We need to talk about, we need to expand, we need to enlarge the scope of morality and see that not only the human beings are included and we are not only interacting with human beings, but also are interacting with other biotic beings. So, other biotic beings are to be taken as moral subjects and I have responsibility towards them as well, to, towards the other beings, other non-human beings. So, this is a, in fact, you know, um, a higher sense of uh, responsibility, which I was talking about uh, in connection with uh, inter-altruism rather than intra-altruism. Thank you all.